In May 2016, we ventured into the rolling grassy hills of southern central Kentucky to visit Kenny's Farmhouse Cheese. This is a beautiful farm with 140 head of dairy cattle and a small artisan cheese making factory on site. While there, we had an opportunity to learn how cheese is made. It all starts with the cows. Well, actually the food for the cows. Kenny grows most of the food on site for silage, which is made from a combination of hay, grain, and nutrients to ensure that the cows are getting all the energy and nutrients needed to maximize their milk production. The cows are milked twice per day at 3 a.m. and 3 p.m., and each cow can produce 75 pounds of milk per day. The udders are sterilized, then attached to a machine to draw the milk out and store it in large cold tanks. Watching this process, we were amazed at how much milk comes out of one cow. After touring the farm, we got to gown up and sterilize to go see the magic behind the cheese making process. The process varies for different cheeses, but most follow similar steps. The first step is pasteurization. The raw milk is run through a machine that heats it up to kill unwanted bacteria. The time and temperature of the pasteurization is recorded for food safety purposes. After pasteurization, the milk is pumped into large vats that are heated with a water jacket to the specific temperature for the cheese being made. A starter culture is added to acidify the milk, and once the desired pH is achieved, an enzyme called rennet is added which coagulates the milk protein. The coagulated milk is called cheese curd. At this point, Kenny takes a giant cheese slicer and drags it through the vat to cut the curd mass into tiny pieces. This releases the whey protein that is trapped within the curd mass. The curd mass is then cooked in the vat, which causes the curds to lose moisture and firm up. Once cooked, the whey is drained from the vat into a special floor drain. The whey is added to a manure pile and later used as fertilizer. The cheese may then be salted and seasoned and added to a mechanical press to remove the last of the whey. Once pressed, it starts taking on a shape you'll recognize. At this point, they're cheese wheels and their shape is fine-tuned. Although they taste good, they still have a long way to go. All cheese is salted at some point, and some will be taken to the brine room to cure in salt baths for a while. Our tour then takes us down the hall from the brine room to a set of rooms called the blue and white room. This is where the cheese starts to dry and the aging process begins. That's where things started to get funky. Normally, when you see mold on food, you throw it away. But with cheese making, you control it. You want the bacteria to do its work, but not run away with the cheese. These rooms are kept cool and sanitized to only allow the correct bacteria to grow on the cheeses. The bacteria is partially what determines the type of cheese and gives it its flavor. Certain bacteria, like those used in blue cheese, are more aggressive and need to be kept away from the other cheeses. That's why there are two separate rooms. In the blue room, we met a guy named Will, whose job it was to keep the bacteria happy. This entails regularly washing off the excess mold, salting and keeping the cheese moist, or even piercing the cheese to provide oxygen for the bacteria. After the cheese has been properly dried and the bacteria has formed a protective rind on the outside, many of the cheeses are waxed or packaged. The cheese is then kept in cold storage where it finishes aging to perfection. Once finished, the cheese is taste tested, packaged, and shipped out. After getting the behind the scenes tour, we did a little taste testing ourselves, and they were all amazing. We left Kenny's farmhouse cheese with lots of new friends and a new appreciation of artisan cheese. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our channel to follow our adventure.